Hello everybody and welcome back to Outcast Studios. I hope you've all had a lovely day. Welcome back. You join me on Starsick playing Starsick. I still don't quite know the terminology that I'm supposed to use here, but I star sick. That's caveman for those of you that don't speak it. And yes, you join me at the College of Ancrea. Ignore that, I'll explain that in a second. And we are back for what is, I believe, episode 27. Let me just quickly tab out and check what episode we're on. Because we are certainly getting up there in terms of numbers. Yeah, this is episode 28, actually. Episode 28, I believe... You know, I'm glad I checked that. Apparently last episode, I, I have the wrong title. Uh-oh. Do you mind? But yes, this is episode 28, and we are here to continue on. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm quite ill. From where we left off last time, and for those that don't remember where we left off last time, it wasn't with this, it was instead with this. Now, admittedly, I don't know how to fix this. There's a very annoying visual bug going on where, as you can hear, it's singing, but it's not actually showing any of the um, constellations, uh, which means it's probably in the sky right now if we were to check. Uh, yeah, there it is. It should be active, but it's not, and I think that has to do with the fact that it's underground. But that aside, in the last episode we attuned ourselves to the constellation of Avicio, I believe it was called, and I left off with the promise that I was going to level myself up in Vicio so that I could uh, expand my uh, skill tree. And I have done just that. Trust me, it was the most boring experience of my life. All I did was, <laughs> I left my computer on overnight, every day since I last started recording. And um, I left myself, I pressed caps lock so that I could also walk around. My hand is currently off my keyboard. And I set myself up on a conveyor belt, if I can, uh, mechanical, yeah, I used the mechanical belt from the create mod, um, and I, j I just, I just, I just ran all night and all day, and my com I basically haven't switched my computer off until today when I reset it so that I could start recording. And because of all of my dedication and AFK efforts, I can now hover over my book and reveal that I am level 40 <laughs> in Vicio, which for those that don't know, is the highest possible level you can attain without altering the number in the config file. Now, uh, just to take a look at my perks for a second, if we zoom out, I have completed the entire skill tree. Um, but I just want to make it very known that I despise skill trees. They make me scared. They, they scare me because I have no way of knowing what the optimal route is, what the best possible thing to pick is. So there's a chance that I'm not doing this as absolute best I could. Here are my stats. So my attack speed is 4.59. I have a uh, plus 64% chance of my perks being effective. Uh, I have 0.82% uh, life leech, um, I have 2.46 boost to luck, uh, 1.13 uh, boost to mining speed, 0.12 to movement speed, plus 80.36% to experience gained, and 6.15 reach. I don't know if you can tell, but I can reach slightly further now. Uh, and if we just take a look at the tree again, obviously you can see the perks I picked, so uh, plus 4% reach. Uh, plus 4% reach, plus 2% reach, 4% movement speed, 3% attack speed, 3% attack speed, 4% mining speed, 4% mining speed, and I kept going through, just grabbing the occasional ones here. I, uh, I grabbed the center gem socket, which is something that we're going to get onto much later. Uh, this is where I got life leech, this is where I got plus 1 to luck, uh, and plus 15% perk experience gained. Okay, so here's how this is going to go down. I despise how they look, but later on we can use a ritual to stop mobs from spawning, but again, that is 
much later down the line. Either way, as I was showing you, if we go back through the perks list, you'll notice that aside from the ones that I've got in the center, so, uh, ooh, yeah, uh, I, 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 one of the perks I got, basically, look at my sword, look at my sword, so it only has Vigilante 2 and Life Leech 2 at the moment, right? Well, if I hold it, it now has Sweeping Edge 2. That's one of the perks I got. Whenever I'm holding a weapon, if it's a sword, it will instantly be enchanted with Sweeping Edge 2. I also branched out to the very edges of the skill tree, and I grabbed myself the Epiphanies on the outside. All Epiphanies do is it gives you access to these triangles here. So, for example, we have the Chakra of Ephemerality. Uh, on this one, which is 2% increase effectiveness of perks and a, a perk experience gained. Then over here, we have the same thing, uh, but this is veracity. Then over here, we have the same thing, but this is tenacity. And then over here, we have uh, dexterity. I might re-roll this later. In fact, it's almost assured that I am going to re-roll this at some point because I want to do an individual episode attuning myself to every single one of these constellations. But that's going to come at another time. We have a lot more to cover before then. Most of which is stuff that I've already done off camera. Yeah, I hate the idea of doing things off camera, but some things I can't help, especially when they're an accident. And the first of those is discovering the other constellations. <clears throat> you see, we're used to the bright constellations, right? Just on their own. But what happened when I attuned myself to uh, Vicio is I unlocked the knowledge of the dark constellations, the miniature constellations, and because I already had spare constellation paper lying around, when I picked them up to get all of my astral sorcery stuff in one place, I ended up just learning them. As you can see, I have Mineralis, Fornax, Horologium, or Logium, however you want to say that one, Octanus, and Pel Pelotrio, which are the, the dark constellations. Now, Mineralis, uh, still no information about this one, because we need to draw it in the telescope. Same goes for the rest of these. Fornax, we know nothing about it. Horologium, know nothing about it. Octanus, nothing about it. And Pelotri... Pelotrio, nothing about it. We don't even know, like, the the big text for this one. That, that one's a complete mystery. We don't know the, the phases of the moon at all. And what that means is we've got to take our telescope back out, and whenever it hits night time, we've got to go and search for them, essentially. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to stick the telescope here for now, and then whenever night rolls around, or when we force it to roll around, we're just going to look through here to see if we can draw the shape. Now, the next thing I've got to cover is this thing here. It's called a hammock. Um, it's often recommended, I think I covered this in the last episode actually, that if you're playing Astral Sorcery, you install comforts purely for the hammocks, because these, when you sleep in them, allow you to switch it from daytime to nighttime, which is just a more clean and efficient way of doing things when compared to the watches of flowing time. So as you can see, I've woken up and it's now starting to turn to nighttime, and the reason I built this off camera is because for today's episode we're going to be doing a lot with rock crystals and I didn't want to spend two hours of recording time searching for them. So if we just have a look inside of our backpack, backpack, um, we have nearly a full backpack of the, 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 these little guys right here. I went mining for two hours and I recorded the whole thing of me just going around trying to find rock crystals. So we've got brilliant ones like size 3, shape 1, tool durability 1, or we've got uh, collection rate 2, purity 2. We have big ones that have focuses built in. For example, this one's focused in on Avatas. Uh, this one's Armara and Dissidia. This is a dual focus crystal, which I didn't even think was possible, to be completely honest with you. We have purity 2, shape 3. Shape 2, Ritual Range 1, Focus Vicio, uh, it's something that we don't understand yet, which I'm guessing means it's a double focus with a dark constellation. Uh, but either way, since it's getting nighttime, what we've got to do is we're going to look in here, and as you can see, we have glittering stars, which means there is a dark constellation here that we can learn. So if we look at the Astral Tome, look at the shape of the constellations, I believe this one might be either Pelotrio or Horologium. Logium. I don't know how you say that. So let's just draw shapes between this, shall we? Let's... How do, how do you draw shapes again? It's... Do you hold control or is it right click? I... I don't quite remember... Oh, there we go. How you draw shapes on this one. So if we just draw this shape here... Hmm, no. 
There's no other flashing ones, is there? So this is this is a very interesting shape. Which one could this be? This one. Minor no, it's not Mineralis. It's not Fornax. It, it I think this one might be Pelotri uh, Pelotrio. So in that case, it'd be from here to here. No. This one is Mineralis. So I need a small diamond and then a deformed square. So if that's the deformed square, one, two, three, and this is the small diamond, like so. There we go, we've unlocked Mineralis. I knew we could get one of them. And that also gave us two achievements. Got a squint sometimes, which is discover a dim constellation with the telescope. And I can see clearly now, which is discover a bright constellation using the looking glass. Which we've already done. So I'm not sure why it's giving that to us again. Oh, this is a big one. Big reach here. Which one of these has a wide net? Pelotrio's got a wide net. Let's see if this one's Pelotrio. No, because wait, this is the same pattern as before. It's just in a different area. For God's sake, which one is this? Yeah, so this bit connects one, two, three, four, five. And then the weird C would be one, two, and three? No. Hang on. Never mind. This one was Pelotrio, which is, you know what, better than nothing. Okay, that's two for two now. We have learned ourselves Mineralis, which is a dim constellation standing in the light of this constellation. The very stone of the world glows strangely and its shape changes over time. And we've also got Pelotrio. The irresistible and unnaturally compulsive rays of this set of stars are only visible during the darkest or brightest nights which is into it's interesting that this one still doesn't tell us the moon phase but it does tell us here that it's only available during a full moon that's the curve and this is the rhombus there we go we've got fornax finally okay good we learned fornax so now if we look in constellations we click on fornax a strong and intense heat follows closely to this constellation's light brilliant so all we've got left now is horologium an Octanus. And there's Octanus. Great. And here we are. The twinkling stars of the last constellation I've got to get. Where's the far away star? Where's the really super far away one? Because I can see the circle. I can see the circle. But where's the super far away star that it's got to connect to? Hmm? Where's that? Okay, so it turns out the reason this isn't working is because this isn't even the constellation for Horologium. This is the constellation of Lucernia, or Luceria, or however the hell you say it, which is apparently the constellation of light. And for some reason, even though I can see it, it's not letting me trace it, which I'm taking to mean I haven't unlocked it yet. But if I haven't unlocked it yet, then why the hell is it showing it to me? It didn't do that with the dim constellations, so why would it do it now? Yeah, so this one right here is, this one is booties. If I go across like this, and then out wide like this, 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 and then back in, that's the constellation of booties, which is a thing, I guess. I, I, I really have nothing more to say about it, other than it is taking up precious space in what could have otherwise been the constellation that I'm actually looking for. Can you believe I've spent nearly an hour looking for these goddamn constellations? I, I am baffled that it has taken this long. Oh, this place looks so much prettier with the extra constellations in the sky. Now, is the one I want in the sky. For the record, I know I'm gonna get it eventually. It's not down to RNG, it's every 36 days, which is an incredibly long time. But it's still trackable. Hang on a second, this one's new, I don't recognize this one. Wait, no way. No way, is this what I think it is? Oh, please be this one. Over like an arch, and then flick up. Horologium! <laughs> oh, we finally got it. We finally got it. Oh my god, that took us, that took us, that took us an hour and 30 minutes. That took so long. Uh, 
but hey, at least we've completed the entry. It doesn't, it still doesn't tell us when it appears. It's uh, every 36 days, I believe. But there we go. The constellation of time. The co this constellation shifts in time, only showing during significant astral occurrences. Its light twists time, accelerating the things that they shine upon. Shine upon my goddamn nuts. Ah, oh, it's been that long. I genuinely forgot what the plan was for today. Something, something crystals. Yes, that was it. Okay, so... I don't know if I've already played it, but if not, here's the footage of me collecting all of these crystals. And if I did already play it, well, you stuck with me here. Um, and in that footage, you, you would have also seen that I built myself the gem helmet. You would have seen all of the steps I went through to make this. Um, I did this purely for the night vision. Because going into caves uh, is really dark. So, night vision. And now I remember what it is we've got to do today. So, my main goal for the past couple of episodes has been to create our own collector crystal for this um, luminous crafting table so that we can have a proper and effective and usable demonstration altar. It's a big old sentence. Basically, if this is a classroom, I want to be able to actually use this when teaching people about using it. So, in order to do that, I needed to attune myself a crystal to what I believe was Dissidia? Uh, nope, Evariso. And the reason I specifically chose Evariso was because that was the one that that crystal is, so it's the one I felt the most comfortable attuning a crystal to. And in the last episode, I made the mistake of thinking that this would only work for self-attunement, when that's not actually the case. This thing works perfectly fine um, for attunement of any kind. However, this one is set up to attune for Vicio which we don't really want for this crystal. We need Evariso. I also think I fixed the visual bug of the lights not appearing. Don't ask me how I did that. But yeah, we were attuned to Vicio. So what we need to do is make another one of these in a different room in order to attune ourselves to... Evariso. And to do that, I need another one of those. Now, there are five main bright constellations. There's Vicio, Avitas, Evariso, Armara, and Decidia. Unfortunately, however, we only have four rooms down here. We have one, two, three, and four. And we don't really have another option in terms of um, adding on more rooms. Because, I mean, if we come out here, even if I wanted to, I couldn't build a room on the diagonal. The only reason I could afford to build a room on the axes, on the horizontal axes, is because if I come through here, I have all of this underneath space and the underneath space of the main area. If I went at a diagonal, all I'd have would be this. So I've been thinking, and I think we need to come up with a new solution for where to put our attunement altars. But the thing is, it really has me stumped about where to put them, because, again, I could just start doing floating islands around the edge, but I just don't like the idea of it. Not just because it feels wasteful to not use the space that I've created, but also because I can't imagine a way of making it symmetrical, to make it even. 
because if I put them in the corners, one, two, three, four, we're still missing out on a fifth one. If I put them on the axes, one, two, three, four, we're still missing out on a fifth one. And it's not like I can just put the fifth one at an angle and then have the dark constellations fill up the other angles because there's, n there's, there's too many of them. There's five regular and then there's five dark. And I don't know about you, but I don't know I don't know any five sided squares. That's a pentagon. And I don't know if you've noticed, but this base isn't a pentagon. Maybe I should have made this base a pentagon. Unless of course there's a way to make this bigger on the inside. Hmm. Maybe that could be an idea. Hang on a second. Now that I think about it, I could just build a pocket dimension to store all of this stuff in. I could build a pocket dimension to store it all in. Oh, now that's good. Oh, I didn't think of that. I could make use of this room so much more efficiently. Yes, it'd be tech oriented, but that could solve so many issues. Maybe not for the above ground, but for down here. Oh, that's very good. Oh, but these are two blocks wide, but it wouldn't have to be those. Mmm, okay. I have a plan. I have got a plan. I am a man with a plan. And for that plan, I need to get my hands on some of these spatial pylons. Okay. And they're pretty cheap to make. We have the we have the capacity to make fluix dust, and I'm pretty sure we have fluix crystals somewhere anyway. And if we don't, we certainly have enough charged thirds quartz. We need to make some fluix crystals. Let's go make some Fluix Crystals. And right there, 13 pure Fluix Crystals. It's not gonna be enough, but that doesn't matter because we have the capacity to make it enough. Uh, whoopsies, I should probably close that. You saw nothing. I need some more fluid pipes now. Let me go and get some more fluid pipes. I'm pretty sure we have a ton of these somewhere around here anyway. Right, let's pipe this up and over the uh, crushing machine, bring it around here, and then along here, and into the cauldron. And you know what, just for the hell of it, let's grab the wrench and make this see-through. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot about that, I need another one of these pump things, I forget that it's not like an infinite range. Hold on a second. And that should then apply the necessary uh, forces to continue dragging this water through hopefully all the way to the end, but if not, we can definitely go and grab some more shafts and gears. This was just made up of what I had in my inventory. There we go, get the good old sucker zuck through those pipes. <clears throat> and while that does its thing, we now need to look up the Fluix recipe. So, we can either enrich a Fluix seed, a Fluix crystal, or Fluix dust. But to get a Fluix crystal, we need regular nether quartz, a charged crystal, and redstone. Now, these two we can pump in using condensers. From the looks of it, it's not quite making it, which is a shame. If I were to just wrench this pipe here... Yeah, it's... Whoa, that went back a bit. Jesus, what? Yeah, it stops right there. Okay, so this one needs replacing here. This one needs a cog wheel. It needs one of those. Let's go grab one. Oopsie daisy, that's not good. Let's quickly fix that leak with a controlled shock. Or, you know, just a pump. And then a bucket to clear up the rest of it. Oopsie daisies. There we go. And with that moving, that should now start pulling water through the pipes all the way down here and into the cauldron. Yep, there we go, jumped right on up. Okay, next step is to automate the actual turning of this thing. Hopefully the system isn't close to being overstressed. I could check, but I've never been able to read the stress monitor. I think it's a useless piece of kit, and I don't know how it works, and I'm not gonna learn. Uh, so let's instead just hook this part up with a cogwheel. Flip around the input with a gearbox, then add another gearbox here, and then I add another gearbox here. And that has started the mixer, just with not enough speed. Okay, how do I fix that? How much is it for a speed controller? Pretty cheap. Let's make a precision mechanism. Uh, 
Okay, and with that last big cogwheel, all we've got to do now, grab some iron nuggies, five to be specific, one, two, three, four, and five. Let's go plug them into the machine, and then all we need, I believe, is a piece of brass to apply it all to. I hate that it does that, hang on. There we go, that's the full thing set up now, it's all in position. All we've got to do is run a golden plate through here, and a golden plate is just a flattened piece, uh, piece of gold, which I'm pretty sure we might have just a couple of these lying around, actually. Oh, well, no, we don't, but we kind of don't need to, because, um, maybe we can just make one. Wait, hang on, what? I'm not even wearing it. Why is it doing that? How? What? I, I don't even know how I'm doing that. I'm gonna be real honest, I don't know what that is. Wait, hang on, no way. I've just looked up what the purple orb does. There is no way this is real. I can do what? Give me something, give me something alive. Give me something alive that is vanilla. There is no way that this actually works the way it says it does. I need to find an animal. I need to find an animal. Cow. I saw a cow on the radar. There's a bunch of sheep over there, but I don't care. I need a cow. Give me a This is gonna be music to my ears if this works. Don't. Just, just don't. And bippity boppity. Oh my god. Oh my god. Agent P? I... Do I have my mob capture net? Do I have my mob capture net? Please tell me I have my mob capture net. Oh, I don't. Okay, as much as it's gonna pain me to get rid of that enchantment because wow. And also the Agent P statue. I have no way of keeping you here. I, I should have brought my mob capture net. Why do I not just always have that on me by default? Please be in one of these. Oh, oh well. All right. Well, goodbye, old friend. Huh. <laughs> Come back here. No, no, no. Come back here. Come back here. Come back here. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you green? Uh oh. Well, that cow will forever remember me. I don't think they will ever forget that. Now, very quickly, what was the button to change the mode? G. It's G. I appear to have made a mistake of some kind. Now that wasn't supposed to happen. I was just trying to figure out how to get this thing to reopen the crafting grid. Nope. Nope. Oh, hello. I didn't realize that was a thing I could do. Nope! Even more nope! Okay, that's a bit better. Infinitely worse! Wait, what? <gasps> no way, is that the killer rabbit? Is that the killer rabbit? I thought they removed that from the game. Yeah, that's the killer bunny, oh my god! <laughs> I need this as a pet. Let me kill the rest of these guys. Oh, look at you. You're such a little cutie pie. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. No, oh, you're gonna kill me. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. That is adorable. How do I get this thing to follow me home? Come on. Come on. Come on. Good bunny. Who's your good bunny? Who's your good bunny? You are. Yes, you are. Come on, I know you want to bite me. I know you want to bite me. Well, you go. Oh, you know what? No. Here's a fate far worse than death. Stop! 
Stop giving me evokers! That's even worse. Okay, well, that fun experience aside, I still can't get it to open my crafting window, so I think I've broken the Philosopher's Stone slightly. Let's just get a regular crafting table. Okay, and now let's just throw this on the conveyor belt and watch it go to town. I desperately need to find a way to speed things up. In fact, I think if I plug this into the correct part of the system, I should be able to. And there we go. Thank you. Now we just need some more brass, which we have plenty of thanks to our last excursion. Why aren't you mixing? I can't put you any lower. Uh... I forgot about that. Just gotta stoke the blaze burner there. There we go. Give me my brass. Now get flattened while I sit on my ass. There we go. Give me that brass. Nice and fast. Then we can turn our magnet back on. And now all we gotta do, go upstairs, make one brass casing, and the rest is history. That's it. Yoink. Give me some of that. Thank you very much. And then just click that. And there we go. Rotational speed controllers. Yes, we're getting up in the world now, boys. Now all we gotta do, plug this into the system. Let's plug it in for now, because all we need it for is... Never mind. I, I knew it I knew it was too good to be true. I knew that eventually it would fail me like this again. I knew it was too good to be true. What the f- I knew! I knew this was gonna happen! I knew it! I knew it! Okay, trying that one again. Since we only need it to power this, let's plug it into the machine. Here. I'm pretty sure we need a big cog wheel for the top, so give me a second. There we go. And then let's connect this system up to this system. Like so. And then I should just be able to turn this up. Really? Still not enough speed for a mixer. There we go. How far can I push this? Yep, too far. <laughs> really? Yeah, I'm not complaining, hell yeah. Right, okay, so now that we've got this automated, all we've got to do, we've got to automate the input of regular nether quartz, a charged crystal, and redstone. Okay, and with those four shoots at our disposal... <laughs> get it? Disposal shoots. I'm here all weekend, ladies. But with those shoots at our disposal, we can now plop them underneath the condensers. Now all we have to do is put redstone in this one, uh, nether quartz in this one, give them some energy collectors, which I'm pretty sure have an EMC value. Let's just quickly check on that one. Ye Where did my recording just go? Uh-oh. Fixed it. Ignore that. Uh, yeah, so they, 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 they do not, but we can just, we can make one of these. It's pretty easy, I'm going to be really honest. It's very easy. And then get the rotational energy transferred to the conveyor belts. From that point, all we need is the charged Certus Quartz, which we have anyway. We have an abundance of these, and even if we run out, we can just go mining. I mean, just looking at this backpack alone, when the goal wasn't to get any charged Certus Quartz, we managed to get a hold of, let's see, these are regulars. Ah, we got a hold of six. Maybe we should go mining for a couple more of these. So with that in mind, let's make ourselves some energy collectors, shall we? And since we have, uh, you know the tablet thing on our side, let's make them tier 3, because why not? And there we go, that's two tier 3 energy collectors. Put one there, and one there, and then the glowstone on top like this, and this. And while we're at it, let's just do, 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 and do. And now all we have to do, let's grab a piece of redstone from the backpack and drop that up here. There we go. And then this part's the hardest part, getting the nether quartz. Let's see if we've got any nether quartz in the computer. Yes, we do. 51 of the son of a gun. Right then, let's take this one and then drop it into the tablet and then let's take it back. All we're going to do now, drop this in the top of the condenser here and then from there. Uh, next step is rotational power. So if we build shafts along here to connect these two pieces and then grab ourselves a dual gearbox setup. So we put one here and then we put another one here to flip the rotation around, like so, there we go. And then we connect up the cogs along here, so we have shaft here, gearbox here, shaft gearbox again, flip it, then it's shaft, and then finally a third gearbox when flipped correctly. But that overstresses the system because it's being overclogged, so if we turn it down by a notch, there we go. 
Sadly, however, this is being pulled in the wrong direction. So what we've got to do, if we turn this into a second gearbox like so, and then remove this gearbox, there we go. Go! It starts mixing together into- Oh no, that's making rose quartz. I didn't think about that. Oh no. From there, we need to put in an escape hatch for the actual mixing basin, which is going to be this side uh, from the looks of it. Uh, but that, it once again overstressed the system because it's another thing added on. So we're going to turn this down a notch. Hopefully, yeah, that's still fast enough to mix. So all we've got to do now is we've got to reverse the polarity of this neutron flow here. Don't ask. By somehow getting this to rotate the other way. Uh, that's not going to happen. So what if instead we set it up so that this one is... No, because then that one will connect there. Uh, I've, I've shot myself in the foot with this one, haven't I? Unless I go down... If I go down, like this, connect these together, then I can go underneath and back up. And then all I have to do is grab myself another one of these depots. Where did I put the first depot? You know what, it doesn't matter where I put the first depot, we're gonna make another one anyway. So if we do at create, make ourselves a depot. There we go, give us the depot, brilliant. From there, what we can do is we can then make ourselves some encased chain drives, which are very important in the create mod. These guys right here, let's grab a couple of these. That's one, two, three, that should be enough. Uh, we can chuck the rose quartz up here, because to be honest, we don't need it. That was an accident, just like, uh, most things. Um, and then finally what we can do is we can, uh, plug this one here into the system using a gearbox. Never mind, no we can't, that's going the wrong way. What we can do though is we can connect all of these together using encased chain drives, like so. That's it, and somehow that's gathered some rotational force somewhere along the road. And all we have to do then is plug it in here. Oh, that's where it's getting it from. In that case, then, all we'd have to do is plug it in over here. Ah, but that would require an extra tra extra chain drive, because I didn't grab enough of them. And those are eight more chain drives. All we're going to do, we're going to pluck it in there. And there we go. That's the full thing. Last thing that we can do is we can grab that depot and we can put it at the end right here so that it collects all of the rose quartz. Or at the very least, it collects enough of it. Now, what we're going to have to do, since the rose quartz wasn't part of the original plan, is let's get ourselves a... Do these andesite funnels have an EMC value? They do. Did I put them in the tablet? I did not. Let's quickly put them in the tablet. Not what I had in mind. Give me two of these. There we go. What we can do now is we can put an andesite funnel down onto a netherite barrel, if I remember correctly. We did put netherite barrels in here, right? Yeah, here they are. Grab a netherite barrel, plop that there, and then we can put the funnel there. And then we just have to change the input direction. There we go. And that's going to slowly start collecting rose quartz for us, which is brilliant, but rose quartz isn't what we were originally after. So, what we're going to have to do to make up for that is very quickly now just throw some of that charged Surtis quartz into the mixing bowl. And that should output us some Fluix crystals. Although it is certainly taking its time. I may have a theory. Oh, never mind. Is my theory... Okay, yeah, so I need to grab just a regular Fluix crystal. Oh, no, I don't. Never mind. My theory was completely bogus. It did just have a backlog. Okay, that makes things better. It's running out of water. That's a first. Why is that so slow? This thing still has a ton of water in it. Why is it not moving? That's odd. A piping issue. But there should be nothing wrong with it so far. Nothing's been flipped, has it? This thing is still going in the correct direction, yeah? I can't see for all of the tech. It's in the way. No, it's being piped the wrong way. That's an interesting one. I don't know why that flipped. I must have done something weird. Oopsie daisies. And that gave us eight Fluix crystals. Not great, but considering that we can't exactly farm regular Fluix crystals, then it's better than nothing. Let's go see if we've got any more charged Surtis Quartz lying around. We have some regular Surtis Quartz, but I don't see any charged Surtis Quartz, unfortunately. It's a pity there really isn't a way to charge regular Surtis Quartz, to be honest. 
That would have been very helpful. Okay, so I was about to go and just mine a bunch of charged Surtis Quartz. But I was looking into ways that you can potentially farm charged Surtis Quartz in this mod pack. And I have come across something comically hilarious. I don't know if it's gonna work. I'm just going to put that out there. This might completely fall through, but it will be so funny if it does work. Let me just quickly find the backpack that I put my cardboard boxes in. And now let me find a chest with uh, charged Surtis quartz in. Uh, it looks like I don't have any. Okay, I'm going to have to go mining for some ant after all. But if this does work, then... We will only have to go mining for it at uh, once. Interesting that that didn't magnetize to my inventory. Now, step two would be to find a chest. I know I used to carry a ton of them around with me, but I don't think I have them anymore. So let's just make a quick trip back to the base because I can't believe I've got to bring a chest with me. And just because it's got a free slot, let's use this one to test it out on. Now, please work. Oh. Okay, never mind. I, kn I knew that'd be... Wait, where did it go? Wait, what? Oh. Never mind. Weird visual bug. Uh, the the thing I found was uh, someone wrote a bug report. I, I, it must have been for an earlier version. Where if you put a cardboard box onto a chest that had Sodus Quartz in, charged Sodus Quartz specifically, what it would do is it would uh, drop the Sodus Quartz, which I think it did. Uh, but then it would also still be in the thing, so it'd duplicate itself, but I, I believe they might have patched that now since it didn't work there. Oh well. Can you leave me alone for like five minutes, please? Right then, so I guess all that we've got left to do now is go on a very quick mining trip to get some charged Surtis Quartz. Better keep my eyes open, I suppose. Okay, well after a lot of mining, and I mean a lot of mining, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. This stuff is rare as hell. I've gotten 19, I've been mining for the better part of an hour and a half, probably even two hours at this point. I, I have no way of telling because I've kept the timer paused. This is really hard to come by. We are going to definitely have to figure out a way of farming this stuff. I have an idea in mind, but it's very, it, it's not something I can do now. What I'm doing now is a stretch in terms of what I can do in a single episode. This, this would be an entire, like, dedicated episode. And it wouldn't even be of this, it'd probably be of Anadonia. Either way, 19 is gonna have to do. Check out my loot. This is just from today, by the way. This is just from mining today. You wanna see the other backpack? This isn't the other backpack. N neither is this. N neither is this. Wait, what? Oh, it was this one. Whoopsies. Yeah, so it's this one was from today, and this one was from... I, I don't remember when this one was from, actually. But yeah. Very, very rare. I would give them an EMC value equivalent to that with which it, with what it takes to get. Um, but I'm going to be very honest. I don't want to. All right then, so let's throw the charged Sodas Quartz in here. Let's wait for it to get through its backlog, and then we should be uh, we we should be good. And there we go. Jesus Christ, they give a lot. No wonder they're so rare. We have fifty in here now. That's ridiculous. Unnatural. How'd I get that? Oh, create fluid crystals. I swear we've done this already. Whatever. Either way, now that we've got those, we can do at applied energistics. And we can work on getting the spatial pylon. Now, we don't have to purify these in order to use them. But what we do need to do is grind them up to get Fluix dust. So, I wonder if a crusher would work just as well. If I just tab out and give my... Well, not tab out. Why did I say tab out? If I put five in a stack and drop them in here. Yeah. Okay. And it's also equivalent, which is not great, but it's also not the worst thing in the world either. Uh, of course, it doesn't end there. We also need, for the uh, spatial pylons, quartz glass, which you get from quartz dust and regular glass. And quartz dust is nether quartz in a pulverizer. Thankfully, we have an infinite source of nether quartz now. But, you know, I don't think we have a pulverizer. And I don't think it would let me do it by hand if I wanted to. Oh, it works in the crusher. We're fine. And putting that all together, we can grab ourselves some quartz glass. Only four, because it doesn't like the quartz dust or, or whatever. But that doesn't matter, because we can put both of these into the tablet. Gimme. There we go. Stack of quartz glass. All we're missing now are the Fluix ME cables, which is just quartz fiber 
and some Fluix crystals or a regular ME cable and some water. And I believe a regular ME cable is actually the cheaper alternative, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, wait, no. Fluix crystals are the default state. Never mind. And a quartz fiber is just quartz dust and glass, which, guess what, also has an EMC value score. It's a shame the default cables don't have them. Wait, hang on a second. Charged Certus quartz is crafted by inserting an uncharged Certus quartz into the charger and powering it. There's an item for this? There's an item for this? There was an item for this the whole time? I'm about to lose my goddamn mind. Give me my damn spatial pylon. I'm so glad we have one of these now. Okay, so, so, so... So wait a minute. Neither of them have an EMC value, which is fine. It still means I don't have to cheese it. But do you know how common Surdus Quartz is that's uncharged? I have one, two, three, four, and nearly a half, maybe even over a half, yeah, over a half stacks of the damn stuff. And look how many it gives for using it in the recipe. There is no reason we should have had this much of an issue getting Fluix. Okay. How do you craft a charger? Oh. Just two crystals and some iron. Yay! I'm so glad I knew about this sooner. Look at that. There's even an achievement. There's an achievement called Fluix Production, and you want to know the best part? You want to know the best part? I'm not going to be able to check what that's called. I mean, like, the, the flavor text for it. Do you want to know why? Do you want to know why? Because my game, my game just crashed. My game, my game, my game. Okay, and it said that this thing needed power, so all we've got to do is find an open cable slot now. I could just plug it in here, but it's getting very unsightly. I still need to tidy up these cables. I need to tidy up most of the stuff in here, because, I mean, yeah, it's a machine room, but it's also a very cramped room. I'm, I'm just going to be a hundred with you there. Uh, what we've, uh, but for now, yeah, let's just stick it over here, I think. I think that should be good enough. Uh, I don't want to drain the power supply too much, though. That could be dangerous. If you want to know why that could be dangerous... Ooh, I forgot I left this running. Nice. If you want to know why that could be dangerous, um... Follow me. I wasn't planning on revealing this yet because it's not done. Uh, I've been using a lot of time in between recording sessions to put this together. It's supposed to be a bit of a, a surprise for Ruby. So, uh... Shh. Don't tell him. But welcome to my laboratory, or at least uh, my bunker. I don't really know what you'd want to call it. Uh, but behind these doors here... Where did it go? Where did it go? The world isn't destroyed, so I'm assuming that, um, that maybe this was just uh, some sort of despawning bug, but th the wither was supposed to be here. Do you remember a, a couple episodes back? Maybe it was last episode, for all I know. Uh, we built the ether farm. or well, not the ether farm, sorry. What was it farming? It was farming... E yeah, it was ether. The ether farm. This was supposed to be farming ether from the wither, but it appears to be missing. So I guess I don't really have anything to worry at, uh, uh, worry about after all. But yeah, this was originally why I didn't want to drain the system, because this entire thing is plugged in to the solar panel system upstairs, and too big of a strain on it might disable the stasis chamber, which would obviously be di disastrous. What do you think about my corridor design, by the way? I really like it. I've been- I've taken a shine to these dynamic lights. They're really simple to craft, um, all things considered. It, it's just glowstone and regular stone, which is, you know, very cheap. I think the most expensive thing that's in here isn't even the skystone, because again, skystone you can just get from farming meteorites, and we have a ton of those, and they've also got an EMC value. Um, I think the most expensive thing is the high voltage coils here. Uh, so if I just type in high voltage coil... Yeah, because this requires HV wire coils around iron, and HV wire coils are aluminum wire and sticks, 
an aluminum wire is engineer wire cutters and a steel plate. And steel plate is just steel in an engineer's hammer, but it's a giant sort of progression and none of it has an EMC value. So all of these I have to make by hand, which is why I haven't really extended the card all that far. But yeah, um, so the wither that we, the, that we made to harvest ether gas from, it's been down here this whole time. Uh, so let's just seal that back up very quickly. There we go. So uh, that's why we don't want to put too big of a drain on the system. Although, now that it's missing, I am going to have to put a new one there. I, I can't just leave it empty, otherwise it's not going to harvest any gas for us. So um, I'll do that off camera. Either way, with the charger in place, all we have to do now, I'm assuming, is just put the Certus Quartz into it. It only does it one at a time, which isn't great, but I think that means that we can automate this. Uh, that was instant. Oh my god. One, two. One, two. One. Two? Hmm. Why are some instant and others aren't? That's interesting. You know what I could do? Now that it'd take too much effort, let's just do this by hand for now. Yeah, I couldn't do it. I automated it. But on the plus side of things, that makes things a lot quicker for us. All we got to do is we shove... Uh, in the filters, first of all, we get the charged Certus Quartz, put that up there, and then in this filter here, we just put regular Certus Quartz, and then if we chuck the regular Certus Quartz in this chest here, and then the charged ones in this one here, what that should do, there we go, it'll send it in when it's ready, and then it'll send it out when it's done. Brilliant. And then from there, what I could do if I wanted to is I could add another conveyor belt going around the edge to drop it into the thing, but I think I'm going to wait on that one. What? That's strange. Either way, we've already made one spatial pylon. Now it's just a matter of making all of the others, and the only thing we've really got to worry about now is the cables and the glass. And the cables are, all things considered, pretty easy to make. Like, it's just one quartz fiber and two crystals. There we go. That's the cables done. Now all we need is shift click a Rooney, split them between each other, and boom, we have two more. That simple. Then we can click it again, and we're short on dust. Okay, let's just go grind some of the crystals up. Let's leave 18 in there. Let's go take 18 to be ground. And there we go. That's three more spatial pylons. What are we waiting on? It's the glass. You know what? Let's uh, throw the glass, let's take out the fine silk, throw the glass up there, and then we can shift click, and now we have five. And all we have to do now is make more cables. And to do that, we're just gonna need to grind some of that quartz from downstairs. And uh, actually, do we even have to do that? We don't even have to do that. We've just gotta make more Fluix crystals. Oh, it's cause it's running out of redstone, which is surprising. And I think it's also running low on water finally. Yeah, it has. It's run out of water. And then from there, now we have 11 spatial pylons. And before we continue, I think it might be imperative to us to figure out how many we're actually going to need. Because I don't think it's gonna be all that many, to be completely honest. Because while we are selecting a big area, we don't need that much height. Which is usually what makes these things so expensive. In fact, if we've done this correctly, we might not need any more than 11. So if we just mine down these corners here, get rid of this wood, and we want it to include the floor, so we'd have to go one, two, three, four. Five for safekeeping. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. We need twenty in total. We had eleven. We only need nine more. We are perfectly golden on this so far. We're absolutely sorted. It might not be the most astral sorcery solution to this, but it's a drifter solution to this. Because, dear God, I am not redesigning this base. <laughs> So, what it wanted next was more Fluix dust, so let's go and make more Fluix dust. Remember, we just need nine spatial pylons, and then I'm willing to call us done for the day because I've been recording for about four hours. <laughs> I have no idea if this will speed it up or not, but one thing I've just thought that we could do is just go grab a watch of flowing time to see if that increases, or rather decreases, the speed at which that thing mixes things. Because as we know, watches of flowing time can interact with create mod things. Even if it's just a small boost, it'll certainly do bits for us. 
Oh, yep, yeah, that definitely interacted. In fact, we found the bottleneck. It is now the conveyor belt. This thing isn't fast enough. And I think that's because it has to go on here first. If we took out this middleman, I think this would no longer be bottlenecked. As it stands right now, though, this is brilliant. Just because of how much rose quartz we have, as soon as this starts producing fluix, I'm gonna add into that filter there that it's only allowed to let that out, so that, um... We, we just don't have a mass production of rose quartz. Because this is still not used any of that. You know what, let's stop the input of that and then let's turn this on. There we go, I knew that'd fix it. How did that only give us 26? I put a stack in you! Oh, of course, fastest viable option! So I do need that filter. Now it can only produce fluix. I knew that there was some messiness going on there. It didn't stir fully because it was just throwing out the first thing it could. Now it has no choice. And now the crystals are starting to stack up. Call me Walter White because I be cooking some crystal, baby. I'm never saying that again. Right, either way, gimme. And uh, let's take half of this and then crush it into dust. And from there, that gives us another five spatial pylons all we need now is to go and grab some more glass. So we need in total uh, 4 for a 6, 8 for 7, 12 for 8, 16 for 9. We need 16 more bits of the quartz glass and we should be done for the day. There we go, 9 spatial pylons. Let's head on back over to Ancrea, down the glory hole. And the last pylon can be put into place. One, two, three, four, and five. Now, for those of you that know how applied energistics works, you'll know what we've set up right here. You'll also know that it's not fully complete, but um, shush, just, just, just let me have this. And you'll know what the plan is for this area. Now, obviously, this does make that room over there very redundant. I have no idea what I'm going to put in there. Although, now that I've said that, as I was saying that, I had the idea to put rituals in there. So, that's what we're going to do. Eventually. But this main area is now going to become our resonating, no, attunement area. And we're going to be able to swap out for all of the different attunements, which is going to be absolutely amazing. And if I'm smart enough, I could probably even set up a system to make it so that only the ones that are gonna be in the sky are available when they're in the sky, which, said out loud, is kind of confusing, but trust me, it'll make sense. But yes, I am leaving today's session here at double the length it would take for me to record a regular just episode of anything, to be honest, because we are finished with uh, our goal for the day, or at least kind of. We're, we're, we're finished with step one of our ultimate goal, but uh, again, shut up. Uh, but yeah, I'm happy to end it there. I'm actually smiling for once as I finish one of these uh, sessions, which is brilliant. Uh, and yeah, if you did like the video, make sure to like. If you want to leave a comment, make sure to comment. If you like me, please, then remember to subscribe. Uh, but yeah, now I can get on to, in case I don't see you, a good morning, a good evening, a good afternoon. And good night. See you in the next one, shitlords. Bye-bye!